Well, welcome to the signature segment of today's 3-hour news show. See the stories. Did you know that October is marked as a menopause awareness month? But if you haven't known already, this aims to raise awareness about an important life transition that affects women all around the world. Menopause Awareness Month aims to break taboo and improve women's health and well-being by raising awareness about the symptoms of menopause and the support options available. Each year, there is a theme to sunlight on different topics surrounding menopause, and this year's theme is Menopause Hormone Therapy, which is popularly known as Hormone Replacement Therapy, or HRT. It is a treatment used to relieve symptoms of menopause. Hmm. Well, I'm not always one for the supplements and drugs, if mm. you know what I mean. Mm. But it's very interesting to see that these innovations are definitely available. So how, what is HRT and how does one stay active and healthy in the menopause stage? Of course, we have to have a certified health coach with us here today. Mia Fitri, who specializes in health over 40, who is also a fitness coach. Hello, my Mia. Hello. Welcome to the studio. Good evening. It's very good to have you here. Thank you yes. for having me. Of course, always an honor. <laughs> you know, I follow her on social media and I love following her on social media. You know why? Because what? you are so active, you know? And she's she, she, like, she lifts weights and things like that. Uh, That's like a true inspiration for me. Well, you... And my you, cannonball shoulders. <laughs> You saw her on social media. I saw her at the gym. Oh. First half. So she lifts heavy, heavy. I mean, you see my frame is big. I don't live as heavy as her. Wow. So before we dig deeper about the topic, of course, can you share with us the differences between a health coach and a fitness coach? And you are both. Yes, I am okay. both. I am both. Now, what are the differences? So that's a good question. Often people can't tell the difference. Um, so a fitness coach, trainer you train someone physically mm -hmm. but a health coach basically we coach people to build a healthy habit mm. and it's easier said than done right because habits is very hard to you know, really change mm. or upgrade so i'm helping my clients uh, who coach with me to build healthy habits you know how you go to a doctor or you get a lab test result and mm. you're diagnosed mm. with a condition and then the doctor will say, well, you need to change your lifestyle. And then often people will say, where do oh, I begin? Do? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so um, a health coach will <clears throat> go um, and look into your lifestyle deeper mm -hmm. and see where you can upgrade your behavior into a healthier behavior. Ah, now, that's what we do. When it comes to your specialty of uh, training people above 40, yep. um, what is the importance of people above 40 to have a trainer in their daily life and also the daily habit mm. because often people in their 40s they're at the top of their career or um experiencing some sort of crisis even or you mm. know they go through many things and juggling many things in their lives and often health is taken a back seat mm. you know? and i think in your 40s is actually when you need to start investing in your health because your body will change, you mm. can see the difference, you, your body's not <clears throat> reacting the same way anymore. So I think we need to be investing more on our health, self-care, mm. when you are in your 40s. So, so Understood. Ba backtrack a little bit to a uh, health coach. What health dimensions are we talking about when we talk about lifestyle? Is this purely just the exercise or do you also work in terms of habits like you know, uh, food, nutrition? Yes, mm. definitely. So that's what we cover. So when we see health uh, or optimal health, it's not just about exercise, it's about your mindset, nutrition, um, exercise, just one of them. And then recovery. Mm. Recovery. Because, yes. Do you know what that what includes recovery? Mm. You know what? Sleep only. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> oh. She's gonna sleep. sleep coach me. Sleep over is part of recovery, yeah. you know, stress management, mm -hmm. uh, meditation, breath work is part of recovery and we don't do enough especially when you live in Jakarta yeah you know you're very it's very stressful to live in the city and often people don't recover enough mm. to you know to maintain their health and I think that's what people often forget you keep pushing and then you suddenly experience this 
chronic stress mm -hmm. and you don't know where to start. You know, you don't know your, so, and you're basically under recovered. So how does all these dimensions, because today we're talking specifically about menopause, yeah. how does these health dimensions affect, uh, you know, perimenopause, premenopause and perimenopause and menopause? Okay, how about we start with the more critical uh, information first yeah. before we go to menopause oh, yeah, so that yes. we are all on the same page. So even though we call the passage, uh, the entire passage, menopause, mm -hmm. menopause is actually just one day. <clears throat> oh, menopause is just one day? Yes, wait, just wait, wait, wait. one day. It's the day when a woman stops having menstruation for 12 months straight. So just that one day. Oh, right? Okay. So in medical, uh, it actually represents when she um, stops or her reproductive function stops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, but when we go to medical terms, there are three phases mm -hmm. of uh, of this journey. So there is perimenopause, menopause, then postmenopause. Ah. Okay. So there's a lot of questions there because there's. Not many people know what's happening in those stages. That's mm. right. Right. All you know is the sound. Oh, my period stops. <laughs> well, that's when it's. You that's know, the menopause. You start to no notice. Ah. Usually, that's the common symptoms when you start having irregular period, be it shorter or longer in duration, mm -hmm. or um, the difference could be in the volume as well. But you know, then you start. When do I start? You know, perimenopause. Mm -hmm. So people say commonly in their 40s, but actually it can also happen in your mid-30s. No way. Yes, and there's a lot of factors that plays in that. Okay, Yeah. now, of course, certainly, I would not know uh, anything about my menopause that far, but um, now I'm beginning to um, pinpoint the, the moment in my life where I see probably my <clears throat> mom, the, the, the only person that I would know having menopause in my life, I mean, in my surroundings, mm -hmm. my closest circle, I, I try to pinpoint. So now I'm in my um, late 30s. Mm -hmm. I'm in my late 30s. As you were saying, uh, this uh, particular cycle uh, of, of pre-menopause or perimenopause yep, yep. start in the mid uh, 30s. What are the symptoms that is um, feasible when it comes to that? Um, just for me to know whether uh, the, the, the ladies uh, surround me are having <laughs> things. You still like have that. a sister. Uh, I do have a yeah, sister. Yeah, see? So yeah, men in... also needs to know about menopause. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, you at least have a mother. Yes. Right? So that so we I would mean, know how to, how to support. react to it support. and support it. That's right. Support is the word. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I think that's what's lacking here, right? <laughs> is, is that, that's you know... That's okay, Han this interview as well. So back when, like back then, people are still, you know, like taboo talking about mm -hmm. menopause. And often women during their perimenopause or menopausal journey, there there's even a term for, for us, which is whiny women. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because we are, you know, um, even, mm -hmm. you know, at doctor's office, they would say you have a whiny woman. Mm. Or, you know, um, not very nice. <laughs> yes, not very nice. So basically, um, perimenopause stage can be very challenging for a woman because basically it's um, when your hormones start to fluctuate. So when we're talking about hormones, we're talking about three main ones, which is estrogen, uh, progesterone, and testosterone. Mm. So it starts to fluctuate, and when it, when this happens, you start to have these changes in your body, mm. you don't understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. And often what people don't know, you know, they think it's all physical. It's not just physical, it's also in, it's also in your brain. Because so there are hormonal. changes yeah. in your brain as the well. The chemical changes. Yeah, because it's uh, your ovaries um, is also part of your neuroendocrine system, which is basically, you know, your brain is talking to your ovaries, your ovaries talking to your brain. Mm -hmm. So when there is like, this imbalance in your brain, uh, then you know you start to experience like sleep, mm. uh, hot flashes, hot flashes. night sweats, um, and you know uh, sleep disturbance. Mm. You experience mood swings. Mm. You get irritated very easily. Yeah. Um, there is a lot of women that are experiencing depression mm -hmm. and anxiety during perimenopause mm -hmm. phase. Mm -hmm. 
So what must one do in, in regards to how does one take care of themselves during this phase? What do they have to focus on? Because I heard it also obviously affects, you know, your metabolism, for instance. Yeah, definitely. So there will be metabolic changes as well because there is um, changes in your hormones mm -hmm. um, and that could lead to decrease in muscle mass, uh, ah, bone density, that's right. uh, visceral fat. Um, Wait, also... decrease in visceral fat or increase? No, no, in increase in visceral fat. Oh. Okay. And increase in fat mass. Okay. Which is not helpful. Be because decrease in muscle mass. Oh, yes. this is interesting. Is, it, is this why... So two decreases in muscle mass and uh -huh. bone density, which yeah. causes increase in visceral fat and increase in fat mass. Uh. So if you, let's say you're nearing your menopause age and you don't have muscle, enough muscle enough sustaining muscle. your body, how, does that, how would that affect your body? You will find it hard to lose fat. Mm -hmm. Yes, because fat is a, uh, sorry, not fat, <coughs> muscle is a fat burning machine. Because basically, it yeah, it helps your met uh, metabolism runs really well. So if you're losing muscle mass, then you're finding it harder to lose fat. No, I understand why menopause is such a horror for a, uh, for a woman. Because listening to it, I'm kind of like, now this is serious. But I'm really interested in this because um, there is a stigma that says that women shouldn't be muscular and things like that. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, but, but hearing you say it, I, I just wanted to yes, ask this yes. one thing, right? Just because I'm growing my best, that's right. <laughs> no, no, um, I really am curious. If you do have muscle, when the time comes or you are, you know, constantly, you're very consistent or try and you've prepared as early as possible, does it smoothen the process? Definitely. So, this is the thing too about menopause. It mm. increases, because of those metabolic uh, changes, it increases your risk of getting uh, diseases such as heart diseases, yeah. diabetes type 2, mm. um, Alzheimer, mm. um, and osteoporosis, just to name a few, mm -hmm. right? So, you really need to start taking better care of your health and investing more in your health just because of this risk that will increase as you hit menopause. Uh -huh. And the increase is high. So, um, you know, strength training is one of those exercises that you must do as you get in your 40s just because you will be facing this menopause and you will be experiencing loss of muscle mass. Mm -hmm. So you need to do something to prevent <clears throat> it from losing a lot. Mm. You know, the same with bone density, you know, strength training help you keep, uh, bone keep the bone yeah. dense. So that's another thing why you need to do um, strength training. Actually, strength training is not the only thing because we have a higher risk of cardiovascular disease. Then mm -hmm. you also need to spend time doing cardio yeah, yeah. for your heart health. And exercise overall is also helping you have a better brain health mm -hmm. or to keep your brain healthy. <clears throat> So you need to hit those three things when you're in your menopausal journey. You need to keep your heart healthy, your muscle and bones healthy, and your brain healthy. Okay, the way I understand it is uh, menopause is about the absence of a certain hormone, uh, a particular hormone, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Estrogen. So, uh, so estrogen is definitely not, they don't totally disappear mm -hmm. from our body, but it is definitely... Le get less. Uh, yeah. It's like decreasing, drop. yeah. Okay, now in that sense, we were uh, talking about uh, HRT, mm. um, the hormone replacement therapy to reduce mm. the symptoms of menopause and perimenopause. Now, yeah. tell us more about, about this particular thing because yeah. uh, this is uh, relatively new, if I'm mistaken. No, actually, it's not new. It's uh, since the 70s and, mm. you know, it's also growing in the 80s, but there has been some study that made people reluctant to take HRT and now mm. it's becoming more uh, of an option. I so see. the title now is no, you know, people call it more as menopause hormonal therapy rather than HRT. Mm. Um, and are we all candidates for it? Actually, no, you need to run some tests. So these are the things that you need to do if you are wondering whether you are a candidate for MHT is to go to your OBGYN or endocrinologist to ask 
um, whether the symptoms that you are having, if it's very symptomatic, can somehow be reduced mm -hmm. through this hormone therapy. Mm -hmm. And they would then usually run some tests on you to see uh, if you are a candidate because there are still some risks that yeah, are involved. Yeah. Not everyone is, uh, you know, suitable. able or suitable mm -hmm. for this type of therapy. But definitely there are studies showing that it can decrease the symptoms mm -hmm. because it can be very debilitating. Like it, 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 it um, a lot of women feels like they're losing their mind or you know um, oh. can't function very yeah. well yeah. or you know doesn't doesn't like have these heart palpitations or you know increasing heart rate and they mm. can't explain mm. why so if it gets to that level then you need to consider whether you are uh, suitable for um, MHT. MHT. So can you walk us through through the process of MHT let's say one is actually a suitable candidate for MHT are they taking uh, some medications or what? Um, I'm not a doctor, so let me just put that out there. For <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I won't go to a detail in terms yes. of you know whether someone is eligible or not. But you definitely need to talk to your OBGYN and endocrinologist to run some tests. Mm -hmm. I do know that people, for example, who are hypersensitive with hormones can't get uh, MHD. Yep. People who have a very uh, like liver disease or um, cancer sensitive may not be able to get this type of therapy mm -hmm. so this is why you need to talk to your doctor yeah. and run some yeah. tests yeah, yeah. all the more reasons to make sure that your lifestyle is also exactly right? that's what I was because if, if, you, if you do the effort is there is there a possibility that you may not need the HRT? yes ah. I think you know before you do uh, MHT mm. You should try lifestyle change first. Mm -hmm. It's medicine free. Mm, true. <laughs> it's more affordable. Yes. It brings so much benefits into your life. Mm. So much more than just, you know, um, decreasing this. Putting symptoms, a band aid on it. Right? So, uh, the things that you need to look at in terms of lifestyle changes, you need to look at your nutrition, yeah. whether you exercise regularly. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you need to be more strategic actually with the exercise, mm. if I may say so. Because not all exercise is created equal. So yeah. if you have only three times a week or four times a week to do exercise, then you need to make sure that the exercise is the ones that are actually helping you gain muscle mass, mm -hmm. you know, or uh, improve your bone density mm -hmm. or uh, improving your heart health. Yeah. So you need to be strategic because you're a busy woman by the time you're in your 40s usually, True. right? True. So that you need right. to be strategic logical. with your time. So, and I understand that. So you need to be uh, strategic with your goal. And uh, sleep, you know, we need to start prioritizing quality sleep. Mm. Because sleep, by all means, it's like, you know, it's not a lie when they say beauty sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I can vouch it's for this. It's not a lie. <laughs> so so we, be, we have better cognitive function mm -hmm. when we sleep well. Mm. So at least seven to eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can't get seven hours, then you could consider a nap. Mm. And this is the things that I talk about when I do health coaching is because you look into someone's life and see okay where can we tweak this because your your lifestyle or your routine is like this you're commuting or you work night shift mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. how can we balance your life mm -hmm. to so you, that you become a healthier person mm -hmm. that's the sort of thing that we discuss when we do health coaching so it's uh, the holistic approach is pretty much better than uh, having uh, MHD in the first place so you I better, think so yeah yeah and, right. and you know I mean I, I don't know all that's available too in Indonesia. It's different to, for example, in US or in UK when you mm -hmm. have, you know, the FDA approved yeah, and things yeah. like that. And I think we are more limited in those type of things. And I think you should first go to lifestyle change mm -hmm. uh, before you do uh, MHD. Because even if you do that, you get a chance to do that. Mm -hmm. But your lifestyle sucks. <laughs> that <laughs> is also sleep. one thing to, to yeah. be concerned of. 
then. All right, so this is very interesting because although I'm not familiar with um, anything menopause, but it's very nice to know as a man um, how you could actually react and support to uh, the people around you having um, this journey, a menopausal journey. We'll continue our talk with uh, Coach Mia after break, so stay tuned.